Where do we stand right now, Jeff, between the Cowboys and Dak Prescott? Well, Greeny, for many, this is the beginning of the franchise process. For Dak Prescott, it feels more like a restart. Let's not forget that it was last year when the team also applied the franchise tag, not on the opening day of the franchise tag window, but instead toward the end, March 9th being that deadline this time around. This is significant, though. This day is significant because basically what we're talking about here is the Dallas Cowboys saying, hey, look, if we can't reach a long-term deal, We'll probably slap that tag on you again. So let's get to the table. Let's start negotiating. Very important to point out here, though, speaking with people on both sides of this thing, it does not sound as if any progress has been made in a long-term extension for Dak Prescott. So while this is the beginning of, of the process uh, for this year, it also feels like we still have a very long way to go. It's just Groundhog Day. I mean, it's just every single day. They're getting no closer to it a is. resolution while the clock is ticking. Let me bring the whole crew in here and let's talk about this. I mean, Mike Tannenbaum, first of all, you've been the general manager. You've been in the room when these conversations take place. Do you directly say, if you're sitting in that room, do you directly say, look, we're going to tag you if we don't get a deal done. Is that explicit? Are those conversations that actually take place when you're in the room having these discussions? 100%. I'm saying that at the beginning of the conversation, I'm saying it at the end. We may not announce it until, as Jeff alluded to, maybe March 9th, but they will know in no uncertain terms that if we can't get a deal done, we are going to franchise you. That's not in your best interest or our best interest, but 100% we will tag you by March 9th if we don't have a deal. And, Mike, I want to use the word urgency here because a year ago, the franchise tag was a luxury that the Cowboys on their side of the negotiating process had. It's a very different one this year. Can you explain just how different it is for the Cowboys than it was a year ago? Absolutely, Greeny. And I've been in the room. I've been there. He is 12 months away from graduating. He, They could tag him next year, but it's cost prohibitive. So... Last year, they had the luxury of like, hey, if we get a deal done on our terms, great. If not, we have the tag in 21. This year, there is a pit in their stomach. I've been there. It stinks. They have no leverage. They have to get a deal done. And if they can't, the second best option this year, unlike last year, Greeny, is a sign and trade. I did it with John Abraham going back to 2006, where there was no deal to be done with John Abraham and his agents, and we were able to get a first-round pick. But if I'm Dallas, if I can't get a long-term deal done, I really have to look at trading him because the alternative is even worse, which is in 12 months, we get nothing except a comp pick. So there is a lot of pressure on Dallas. They have a pit in their stomach, and this is massively different than it was 12 months ago. All right, so Lewis Riddick, I mean, what, once and for all, the fact that we are being told <laughs> that as we arrive at this place again, they are no closer to making a deal, it seems, than they have been at any other stage in the process. What does that say to you, Lewis? And what does it mean, or does it tell us about what's going to happen? Yeah, what, what it means is to me that they just don't feel as though that Dak truly is in the same conversation as the Patrick Mahomes and the Deshaun Watsons and the people who... We go on shows all the time and talk about as being transcendent, generational difference makers because they're not willing to go ahead and do whatever it takes to go ahead and get their quarterback in the fold and then fit everything else around the structure of his contract. They're just not willing to do that. And that's just mind-blowing to me, especially. You know, I, look, I've seen Dak play his entire career. So what did I do just the other day, a couple days ago? I went back and just started watching some of his best throws and really watching some of his worst throws and just watching him throw the football and execute within the, con the confines and context of this offense. And it's just, I, I just don't, I don't understand what else it is that Dallas could know that we don't know as far as his performance on the football field or what we know about Dak off the football field that would give them pause to not go ahead and make sure that they do everything they can from a contract negotiating standpoint and a future cap um, planning standpoint to get this done. I don't understand what the hang-up is. If it's if it's the number of years, I don't understand why they can't go ahead and make some, you know, and make some kind of concessions to make sure that this deal gets done. Because what he brings to the football field this year in particular, when he wasn't on the football field, spoke volumes to all of us. And it had to speak volumes to them too. So yeah, I think the exasperation that I hear in your voice, Green, and when you talk about this is the same one that everyone across the country is going. How in the heck are we here at this point again?
And Jeff, I mean, that's what we keep being told, is that this yes. comes down to the years. Like, like They wanted five years, and Dak wanted four years. They're allowing the entire franchise to hang in the balance over that discrepancy. It just doesn't compute, in my mind, Jeff, but that's what I and keep being told is the holdup. Greeny, and that's what makes this so much more complicated this year than it did last year and the year before that, because Dak Prescott wanted four years, not five last year. The Cowboys wanted him on a five-year deal. So what happens this year? Does Dak say, hey, look, the, the clock's still ticking. Now it's three years. Now it's a three-year deal. I mean, so how do the Cowboys handle that? To me, it just feels like the further away we get from the start, the harder it will be to bridge the gap. And that's why I have zero faith in this process. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.